Hey guys, today we'll shoot the ILS approach into the Daytona Beach Airport. We're about 10 miles north of the final approach course and about 5,500 feet. Reported ceiling is about 300 feet and we elected to go for the ILS approach since it has the lowest minimums in Daytona. First, we'll load the approach into the G1000. However, it is important to note that it's not required in order to perform an ILS approach, but it does improve our situational awareness and therefore that will be something that we'll use in a real life scenario. If we open the plate for the ILS 7 left approach, we can see that the localizer frequency is going to be 109.7, the final approach course is going to be 070, and we have just under 10,000 feet of runway available. If we look at the notes, we can see the Daytona has non-standard takeoff and alternate minimums. Not relevant for us in this approach. Also the inoperative table in the TPP does not apply here, as the next note tells us what we have to do if the Mazda approach lighting system is inoperative. As we look at on the lateral graphical information, the approach is fed by two DME arcs, one from the north and one from the south, as well as ATC vectoring, which we are going to simulate this time as we descend towards the approach. Folig is our final approach fix. Also, DME is required for the approach, and we have that with our GPS replacing the DME in the G1000 system. Looking at the vertical layout of the approach, we need to reach Folig at or above 1,600 feet, in order to intercept the glide slope. Our category A straight in minimums will be 230 feet and 4,000 feet of visibility. The missed approach procedure will have us climb straight ahead to 700 feet, followed by a right turn to Smyra and climb to 3,000 feet and hold there. As we set up the plane for the approach, we're going to tune in the localizer frequency and set the course for the final approach course. Lastly, we'll make sure we insert our minimums to the system. We have been vectored for a 30 degree interception of the localizer. We're going to fly heading 100 until the CDI needle comes alive and once that happens we'll intercept it and line up with the runway. At the same time we're descending to 1600 feet to intercept the glide slope. As we cross Folig, we are going to reduce power to 1900 RPM and flaps 10 to give us 90 knots on the approach. Also, we'll lower the altitude bug to the minimum's altitude. From this phase, we are focused on flying the localizer and glide slope indications while expecting the minimum's altitude and once in a while looking outside and trying to see the runway.
As we get closer to the decision altitude, we want to look a bit more outside the cockpit to try to either see the runway or the approach lighting system. Remember, if you see the approach lighting system, you are allowed to descend to 100 feet AGL unless it's an LCEF2 approach lighting system and then you can descend towards the runway as if you've seen it. We always should be ready to go mist as the decision altitude is a go-no-go -go altitude. Once we have the runway in sight, the approach switches to a visual landing, idle the power, reduce flaps 30, below 85 knots, and touch down safely. That was ILS approach, see you guys next time.